Committee members of the 32nd Senate District to order. Yeah. Pursuant to Section 2-6.3 of our Rules and Regulations, in order to carry out the orderly process of this county committee meeting, I hereby appoint the following. A credentials committee, the chair will be Marissa Soto, tellers to aid in the tallying the roll call, which will be Anthony Perez and Eve Phileas, and also a parliamentarian, who will be Mariella Salazar. The first order of business is to call the roll. In order to call the roll, I ask the Credentials Committee Chair to please report on whether the County Committee members have properly signed in for this meeting. Thank you. The Credentials Committee Chair has so advised me, committee. and I recognize that a yes, quorum is present. I call upon the parliamentarian, Mariella Salazar, to read a brief summary of our rules and procedures under which this meeting shall be conducted. Summary of the rules relating to the procedures to be followed at the meeting of the Bronx Democratic County Committee held on February 15, 2018. Pursuant to Section 7-4 of the Rules and Regulations of the Bronx Democratic Party, unless otherwise provided within such rules, the procedures for meeting of the County Committee shall be governed by Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised. The order of business at this County Committee meeting will be speakers, only those persons who are duly elected or the officers of this body or elected officials residing within the 32nd Senate District will be permitted to speak to the issues raised in the proceeding in these proceedings. Recognition of the speakers. All such speakers must first recognize by the chairperson and must address this body by means of the microphone which has been provided. Number of speakers, length of speech, no nomination speech shall be longer than three minutes. There shall be there shall not be more than three seconders for any nomination. Voting procedure, section 2-6.7. All voting of this body shall be voiced unless the chairperson shall decide that a voice, that a vote shall be by standing division or by roll call. We are here to nominate a Democratic candidate for the public office of the member, member of assembly from the 32nd, I'm sorry, Public Office of Member of Senate from the 32nd Senate District in the special election to be held on April 24, 2018. The Chair recognizes Honorable Julia Rodriguez.
Thank you. Is there a second nomination? Is okay. May you please stand and introduce yourself? Okay, thank you. Are there any um, seconders? Any other seconders? Okay, hearing none. Are there any additional nominations this evening? We got a competition here. Okay, so the nominations are hereby now closed. All of those in favor of Louis Sepulveda as the Democratic Party candidate for state for state senator from the 32nd Senate District for the special election to be held on April 24th, 2018. Please, if you can, at this time, please rise. At this time, for the purpose of seconding the nomination, the chair recognizes Mr. David Porter. Hearing none, I move that nominations are closed. All those in favor of Ms. Of Ms. Marissa Soto, Latoya Joyner, and Jeffrey Dinowitz as the committee to fill vacancies for the certificate of nomination for the nomination of State Senate from the 32nd Senate District, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. And Marissa Soto, Latoya Joyner, and Jeffrey Dinowitz have been selected as the committee to fill vacancies for this certificate of nomination for the nomination of state senator from the 32nd Senate District. At this time, we call upon Julian Sepulveda. 
for the six years that I have been in the assembly, he has been our, he has been our speaker. And I can tell you that every day that I've served with him, he's treated me with nothing but dignity and respect, and has provided us in the 87th Assembly District with the resources that we've needed to help improve the lives of the people that live there. So let's give uh, the speaker a big hand. Yeah. I also want to thank my district leader, Julia Rodriguez. Julia. Julia just celebrated her 25th birthday. She is a fantastic, fantastic uh, district leader to have. She's made me work. And she's made me hustle uh, out there during elections, and I thank you so much for your support. I want to thank uh, Tony Figueroa, Cynthia Cox, uh, John Tucker. I'm not sure if he's here, but I want to thank all of you for helping me with this endeavor. Um, I also want to thank uh, Beverly Roberts, the head of the NAACP in, the, uh, in Park Chester. Beverly, thank you for your support. And I also want to thank uh, Reverend Felicia Smith. Where are you, Reverend? Reverend, she is my... My, my friend, she is my moral compass, she gives me great advice, she's a big supporter, thank you and God bless you. Now, to me, ladies and gentlemen, the Bronx is the best place in the world to live. That's right. Not, not for long. You know, there's always room for improvement, but look at what we've done, what the political leadership here has done in the Bronx. We now have the highest graduation rates that we've ever had. We've ever had. We've had historic drop in, in, in crime, something we've never seen before. We have affordable housing. We have great leaders, great leaders that I go to bat with every time. And I just want to acknowledge some of them here, like Rafael Salamanca, who's a great leader and very superior. <laughs> um, Latoya Joyner, who is also awesome. love her. You know, people that may or may not be here, but I want to acknowledge uh, Congressman Serrano and Espaillat, uh, Mike Benedetto, Jeff Klein, Victor Picciardo, and of course, the guy who knows more about county committee and knows the address, number, phone number, birthday of all the county committee, that's uh, Jeff Dinowitz. <laughs> now, difficult times may be coming soon. We've noticed recently that the Republican Party and the President tax tax bill that was, no matter how you cut it, designed to benefit the wealthiest people in this country. The problem is that it's going to be at the expense of our people. Corporations shortly, and the very wealthy will be swimming in cash, while we're going to have to deal with deficits. You see, because anytime you have deficits in this country, anytime, when they want to balance the budget, they balance the budgets on poor, middle-class, hard-working people like yourselves. The Republicans are going to attempt to cut Medicaid. There's no doubt about that. They're going to try to cut education, housing programs, and housing subsidies. But I'm so proud that I have great colleagues in government that we go to fight every day for each and every one of them. And there, some of them are here. And we're going to continue to fight. Now, we have a president, unfortunately, that finds among white supremacists, he finds good people. And yet, he refers to black NFL players or engaging in, in peaceful protests as SOBs. We have a president that wants to give the Koch brothers who own Walmart $3 billion in tax benefits while at the same time proposing to change food stamps so that we can give people boxes of food that's selected by the government. We have a president who refers to serial wife leaders as honorable men, but then tries to shame those women who come out against them. We have a Republican speaker who brags about giving a person $1.50 increase in their weekly salary. And he works with a morally challenged president who wants to pay, who wants to pay the tax breaks for the rich while slashing $1.3 trillion from Medicaid, $550 billion in Medicare, and $10 billion from Social Security disability benefits. Not to mention he also wants to spend $50 million on a parade for himself. This is not what this country, and this is not what this state, and this is not what the people that we represent here in the Bronx is about. Now, for my part, I pledge that I will work with my Bronx colleagues to build a wall. We're going to build a wall here, but that wall is going to be for something different. See, that wall is going to be designed to stop the cold-hearted policies coming from Washington. Thank you. That wall is going to protect the poor, 
the working class, our children, our schools, our senior <laughs> citizens, and our immigrants, regardless of their legal status. <laughs> now, I continue to uh, work hard with my colleagues, with the borough president, with the mayor, to make this county, especially the 32nd Senate District, the enemy of New York State. I pledge each and every one of you to serve with honor, respect, and dignity. Thank you. Thank you each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for the support, but let's not take anything for granted. I urge each and every one of you to make sure that you come out and vote on April 24th. <coughs> now before I finish, I want to acknowledge the person that I hope will be my boss in the Senate if God ordains that I be elected on April 24th. And she is here with us. She is one of the powerful, strong women in New York State government. And that's our leader, my future leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, Senator. Thank you, Senator. She came all the way from Westchester County to be here with us. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, another person that's in leadership uh, in the Senate, and that's uh, Senator Mike Janaris of Astoria. Thank you. So again, what you have done is honor me and my family. We're so grateful. We will always maintain an open door policy. I want to do what my friend, my mentor, a father figure, someone who helped me get in politics, someone who was always supportive of me, someone who, even though we don't always agree on policy, never had a litmus test for me. He's not here today because he had a, an event at his church, and we all know, first and foremost, that's, that's his passion. But I know he's here in spirit and his heart. And that's your former Senator Ruben Diaz, our new Councilman Ruben Diaz Senior. I do not take this responsibility lightly. I will always have an open door policy for each and every one of you. I will profess to know more than each and every one of you. Many of you know a lot more than I do. But I will profess that I will always listen to you, I will always try to do my best to help you, and never forget that it is you who elected me. Thank you all very much, and God bless. God bless America, God bless New York, and God bless the Bronx. I want to acknowledge the presence of former Assembly Woman and Speaker Pro Tem of the Assembly and former Deputy Borough President Aurelia Green. And I'd like to call up the person who is leading our party, who has built and strengthened our party and strengthened the Bronx, and that's the Chairman of our Executive Committee, our County Leader, Assemblyman Marcos Crespo. Good evening, everyone. It'll, I'll be brief. But first of all, I think uh, I, we know we had an order of business, but understand that we are dealing with a lot of emotions as a community. We have seen our fair share of gun violence, but I think we should acknowledge, I, normally we ask for a moment of silence, but I think that the beautiful lives that were lost deserve some celebration. If we could give a round of applause for the victims, for the families, for the state of Florida, for the people who are tarnished. And the reason that I ask for the applause and not a moment of silence is that we cannot be silent about these issues. We cannot be silent about guns in our streets. We cannot be silent about lives lost and go to business as usual. We need to do better than that. We need to be louder than that. And we need to demand change in federal policies around guns. As we sit here tonight, the FBI and the mayor of the city of New York are on Matthews Avenue in the Bronx holding a press conference because a local teacher and his brother were found with bomb making material in their apartment. That is happening as we see here. When we talk about these issues, when Luis Sepulveda mentions the issues that he's going to fight for, you have to understand that we don't do this job 
because it's the only option we have. Actually, a Southern Mr. Pulvada had a very lucrative legal business and career, and he took us time away from that to serve, to make sure that we do what we're supposed to do, which is to guide policy in the right direction. One of our county committee members stood up earlier and acknowledged the issues that are important to our seniors. Well, our state policies on how we service our most vulnerable, whether it's our seniors or our children, the state has a role to play. And now is not the time for us to drop the ball on these issues. Now is the time to trust in people who have committed themselves to public service, individuals who have experience in this. I get to be the chairman of the Democratic Party. But while I was still a young boy watching cartoons, and, and eating cereal in the living room of my apartment, a son named Luis Sepulveda was already an activist in the community. Not that he's that much older than me. <laughs> but he started fairly young as a community organizer and as an activist, and helped others get elected. And it wasn't until later in his career that he had an opportunity, ran, and he's been doing things the right way, and we are creating unity in our borough. We are working together, all of my colleagues that are here. And I want to acknowledge some of those party leaders that are with us as well. District leaders Andrea Siegel, Cynthia Cox, Marco Sierra, Julia Rodriguez, State Committeeman Joe McManus and Julio Sepulveda, our Vice Chairs Linda Kemp and Rosemary Ordonez Jenkins, our Council Marissa Soto, our Parliamentary Mariela Salazar, our Secretary Jeff Dinowitz, County Committee Chair Latoya Joyner, and all the electeds, our, our Deputy Borough President, our colleagues from Queens and, and, and Westchester and Andrew uh, Stewart Cousins, our uh, Democratic leader and Senator Janaris, all of us go up to Albany to make sure that policies are directed to address the needs of our neighborhood. When we do that, we spend months out of the year away from our district, away from our children, away from our wives and spouses. We sacrifice to make sure that we go up there to let the voice in behalf of our community. We have to acknowledge that because this job isn't always easy. But it, is, it requires somebody dedicated to do it for all the right reasons. And I know, because I'm a resident of this district, that in Luis Sepulveda, we have the state senator that we're going to need, that we deserve, and who has the experience to get the job done, who's going to say what needs to be said, who's going to propose what needs to be proposed, who's going to stand up and fight when he has to do so. He's going to hold his own friends accountable as much as his enemies. He is the senator that we need in this district to follow in the leadership that Reverend Diaz left behind up in Albany. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for supporting him. Thank you for being a part of this Democratic Party. God bless you and enjoy the meeting tonight. The meeting's not adjourned. The meeting's not adjourned. Thank you for attending. The meeting is now adjourned. Now it's adjourned. Okay.